I'm back at Chris's. We built this fountainscape uh, about uh, two months ago. Look at the birds. It's just so fun. Squirrel. I'm back here to rebuild his very first water feature and turn it into an aquascape ecosystem. <laughs> I love my job. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So you've been here, is it 17 years now? Oh, about 16 years. It's and you said in the first week you built this pond, right? Right when I came, I'm like, I want a pond. This has been running and existing for that long. And what are we doing today with this? It's too shallow. It needs a good facelift. This is my grow out pond where I put small coins until they're big enough to go into the big pond. This is where I work with bonsai out here. This is like my fun place. And the fish are just a backdrop. I love them. I love looking at them and a facelift today. So this is what really got you into the hobby, this one, huh? This was your first pond? This is where it started. Well, there he is. You're still on Ohio time, huh? I'm still in Las Vegas time. <laughs> oh, no wonder you're I late. Got, yeah, <laughs> What's up, Lou? Ready to build a pond just like in go. the old days? And then we got you guys, how you doing? Pretty good. Yes, Very nice to see you, nice to see you. Nice to see you again too. We, we got an easy job today. All right, so we got our tub right here that's gonna be, be filling up here pretty soon with the water from the pond. The fish are a little stressed out. They know something is going on. So some big fish in there for under a year old and they grew in this uh, foot deep pond. So, you know, basically he built this thing 16 years ago and this was the biological filter just returning back through a pipe. This is typically how it is, but we're gonna replace this garbage can filter Filter, probably right over here with a bio falls and then there's a lot of debris on the bottom because you can see they're in the middle of a you know forest out here so all that debris is going to get caught into a skimmer that we'll probably put in over here maybe over here but the first thing we do is drain all this water take the fish put them over there pull out all of the rocks start digging add the skimmer and the bio falls and the pipe and we'll be done here by the end of the day upgrading a homeowner belt pond to an aquascape ecosystem pond Okay, here they come. Okay, add in an aquascape air stone with a pump to keep these guys oxygenated. They'll only be in here for probably, you know, eight hours until we put them back in. So what happened? You just moved a plant and so what we, happened? We pulled out like an overgrown plant out and uh -huh. in the roots, all the cane toads were burrowed in there. Oh my goodness. Those big toads. That yes, from toads Australia. Well, actually they're not from Australia. I think they're from South America, but they're invasive in Australia. I heard they, they can kill dogs, I heard. Well, if the I dog heard. chews on them, yeah. So, oh, I see them. They all, they, all, they all went up into the waterfall area. Oh, boy. So we're going to be pulling those things out we're gonna have and probably put a bucket of them because I think that, uh, unfortunately, they're not gonna they're not gonna survive. I think he freezes them to get rid of the invasive species. We'll put them all in a bucket, let him do what he wants with them. These cane toads are invasive, so you freeze them, what do you do? There's a product that I spray on them. Then that eliminates the problem with the cane toads. Immediately, and I hate doing it, but the cane toads, they'll kill your dog. If you have a small dog and they grab a cane toad. Yeah, because it's my poisonous. Friend, my friend Blake brought a dog over that was dying. He was panic mode, he didn't know what to do. The first thing you need to do is rinse their mouth out real well and you can give them charcoal, but um, they are bad news. And so we're gonna catch all of the cane toads that are in here, put them in a bucket and then you'll spray them and then that will, they'll go to sleep. Correct. Good morning, Blake. Good morning. <laughs> so are these the rocks left over from our build or what? Some of them. And then Tony yeah. brought the rest. From one of the other builds we did, Blake was nice enough to help us out. I said, hey, we need a storage facility for some of these rocks for a few weeks. He said, oh, I still got okay. some leftovers. Uh, okay, so we are gonna hand load these rocks to bring them back to Chris's right now. Blake gets to keep whatever's left over. That's our deal for all the projects. He's always mm -hmm. coming up with out here. He'll have some leftover rocks. There you are. Good deal. Man, these rocks are dense. Got two old guys loading rocks. <laughs> There you are. I'm in a little better shape than Greg. Oh! <laughs> the, the fireman, huh? Whoop! The fireman That's hasn't worked in a year and a half. Talking trash with the pond guy. <laughs> You can 
see the roots in there. The liner is out. The roots have grown all underneath it, but EPDM rubber liners will just go around it, unless it's bamboo or something. This is now gonna be starting to get excavated and uh, the rest of the day we will finish up putting in the rocks in that we just picked up. What are you working on here? Chris had an old filter set up here and he liked the idea of it being able to backwash with, yep. with pond water without having to ruin all of his biological stuff. So we're trying to use his old bio balls in here that are already seasoned. The 2500 bio balls has a choice of two for the bulkheads down here. Yep. We only need one, so we would just cap this one. But instead, we're gonna run his pump into the one like normal. The second one, we're gonna run a, a drain out of and have a valve shut off. So at any right. time, he can open that valve with a drain down the bio falls. We're also gonna take the line from his pump that's going into here and have a valve on that. So he can shut off that pump line from the bottom. There'll be a secondary line coming up into here mm -hmm. that he can turn on. When he opens his drain and turns this one on, he'll be pumping pond water up here that will rinse down the stuff in there. He wants to use all that to water all the plants Makes that are sense. around here. Nice, a little improvising with our system. Okay, so the guys are digging. Lots of roots, boys, huh? 16 years of growth around this. So show me what you're using here. That's what we call the weapon, specifically for situations like this. Okay. Tons of roots everywhere. So go ahead, show us how it works. I think that's a really slick. So we got a couple different ways. You can chop at them. Yep. And it's also cut here, so it makes it easier to go through them this way. Right. And so you call it the weapon. What's it actually called on this thing? Root Slayer. I love it. Tip of the day by loose tip of the day. So Aaron, you said, well, we could put the skimmer there, which would be easy to dig, or we can put it right beneath this tree. Let's make the customer happy and put it right beneath the tree. <laughs> easier maintenance. It is easier maintenance. A little bit more digging. We got the uh, pond almost at the right depth here. We got all of the backfill, I think, from the house. So hard digging. We got the biofalls set over there right on the edge. So we're gonna have a really nice, loud sounding waterfalls. That is for sure but it is hard digging with these tree roots. And then I think this cochina or backfill from the house. So uh, it's gonna be quite the difference when we get done with this. and clean up because I want to get this liner in because I'm really excited to build a waterfalls. It's perfectly level. Yep. So we'll have 22 inch deep pond with this, which would be a nice waterfalls on that side. And it's a lot better for the fish than a 12 inch deep one. o'clock so we haven't gone as fast as we wanted to today but it was harder digging than we were expecting oh yeah it was. most of the uh roots are cut but this underlayment will help prevent any roots from touching the liner and then we'll put the rubber liner on No, it doesn't seem like it, but this will be filled with Japanese koi fish by tomorrow. Crazy. Now that the liner is in, let's do it. Nation. It's a jigsaw puzzle, putting it together. I'm looking forward to getting put some gravel in for the back fill, and then I'm really looking forward to building the waterfall. I wish I had some bigger boulders, but that'll make it trickier, which will make it fun. So Aaron, check out this beauty that I picked up. Yeah, look at this. If I can get that at the right height, 
We have water coming here, water coming here. I like these two elevation changes on here. So we're gonna let him finish hooking up the biofalls there. All right, so we gotta yeah, move that rock put a light right over there. there. This is just the jigsaw puzzle building the waterfall, which is fun. Go look for that big rock out there. We get one more rock in here. All right, so we got the fish cave right here, and then our new stone that's coming right off that game. waterfall. Beautiful. All right, so we just need one more rock for right here, and then we're gonna foam and shim it in. The trick is to use as little rocks as possible to build a waterfall. When you put up all little small rocks, it looks ticky tacky. A couple of big stones, which you've only got one more big one, and you don't have as many small rocks, it looks more natural. All right, so we are hiding the plastic so it looks natural. This will get foamed in, this will get all green and beautiful, and you will not even tell that those are two different rocks, right? True. Aaron, who's used to working with Kachina as a Miami contractor, is foam us all in, hide the lip of the biofalls. We're gonna backfill with soil so we can get plants to grow right up over the edge to soften up this rock look. But here's your two frame rocks. Here's your center rock. I wish I had a bigger frame rock from over here. This one's really nice, it hides the biofalls. But if we bring the soil in, a plant will hide that edge. All right, pump's going in, about ready to foam the waterfalls over here. I'm very proud of this edging that I've got in here, how it looks from this side. So with this log that kind of breaks up the monotony of the stones, it's not easy to blend two completely different types of rock, but we got the old rocks that we pulled out along with the new kachina that we brought in. I think that looks pretty good. I've been telling the guys all the time on how to not see the joints. And when you can get joints like that, and you don't really see and it blends in together and then of course the nice edging that we're going to do up here with some plants this thing is going to look pretty darn sweet plants come nice these are the decorations on the christmas tree so chris are you happy with it i mean i can't say enough good it looks fantastic it needs obviously a lot of plants i think the water flow is outrageous the skimmer i couldn't be happier with because that'll handle all the debris and the depth is perfect for the fish i think it's fantastic This is the water feature that started it all. When I heard that this water feature was in here for 16 years and it was actually his grow out facility for his babies, I knew we had to aquascape it. We came, we saw, we excavated, and this is the final result. Hey, if you guys like these videos, please like, comment, and subscribe because we want more people living the aquascape lifestyle. <laughs>